So I just made the fatal error of not removing the locking tool before you attempt to remove the nut. Hi there, welcome to JPM Performance. Today we are going to be disassembling and inspecting uh, an EMCO EGMT. Um, for those of you that don't know, EGMT stands for EMCO Gears Mazda Transmission. These were originally designed for um, rotary engines and this one has been modified um, for a Miata. So the bell housing has been modified and welded. And this one does have a season of use on it. Uh, customers reporting that uh, it's starting to become hard to get into gear. Um, also, this customer, this is their first time uh, utilizing a dog ring transmission. And oftentimes it's very common um, when, you're, when you're learning how to match gears uh, that you will damage the dog rings. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble and take a look and see what we've got. So something to note on these transmissions, all of the cases have O-rings, so it decreases your cleaning time drastically. Um, the other thing that you want to inspect is movement in this center pin, which is the main pin that moves the gears back and forth. Um, this one feels just like brand new. Another item to note, never put a pry bar in between your cases to pry these apart. They will pop apart and all you'll do is deform the flat surface. So I like to use a little dead blow, give it a little persuasion. Okay, so here are our drop gears. So the beautiful thing about these transmissions is you have your main gear set in the main case and you have two drop gears that so you can effectively change your rear end ratio. Um, this can be a big advantage um, when you are, uh, you can run a taller rear end ratio. These are straight cut gears. Um, ring and pinions are all helical cut gears, so there, there's therefore more drag. So what I like to do, and we've actually tested this on the dyno, is to run a taller rear end ratio, like a, even a 3.6 to a 3.9, 4.10, and then adjust your drop gears for the top speed that you're gonna run. Okay, so what we have here is a double splined lock. 
this outer spline here goes into the nut, the inner spline goes into the counter shaft. Now these splines are offset, so when we go back together, as you'll see, you have to find which one that it will go into. For now, we're good. Okay. Now, some of you might be thinking, why won't the transmission turn freely? This one does because we don't have a gear on it. I'm in two gears. And when you go into two gears, it locks the transmission up. And it's a really good way to break the big nut loose. So there you can see the spline in the nut where the tool engages, just like that. And then there's a spline in this shaft where the inner one engages. It's a really nice um, way of holding that nut from backing off. So this is a 2726 or a 2627. You can run them either way. But with the 27 being on the drive, this is our output, obviously. I'm able to overdrive 27 to 26. So that's a 1.03 overdrive on our drop gears. This transmission was geared for Elkhart Lake um, last month. And so in this particular car, about 130 to 131 miles an hour. So now we will just start unstacking the cases. Once again, you can see the beautiful work that Emco did and everything is O-ringed. Very, very nice. Now, in our rear bearing case, we have another lock and another nut same situation as before. So I just made the fatal error of not removing the locking tool before you attempt to remove the nut. Now, it's not a fatal error because these are very easy to come by. Uh, Mazda will sell them to you. Um, it's actually a good thing to show because almost everybody that has purchased one of these transmissions has broken one of these. They're not super expensive. Um, so now that I broke that one, We'll pull the rest of it out of the shaft. Just like that. Either way, we got our, um, got our nut off. So now we can continue to unstack the rear section. So one thing to note on this rear plate, this transmission has not been a part since Emco assembled it. They shimmed this very precisely on this counter shaft with a number of shims. So be sure to not lose these shims that go under this rear bearing retainer. I like to kind of stack everything in order.
Okay, there we go. So, usually, and this is not an uncommon sight, you will see that reverse gets the most amount of abuse simply because there's not a synchronizer. So when you go to reverse, what you want to do is you want to attempt to slide it in super, super slow with your clutch in. And then if it won't go, what you do is you just slightly, slightly release on the clutch and the dogs will line up. And what do I mean by that? These two items have to mesh like that. Oftentimes they're like this when you go to shift, and especially into reverse or first. So if they're bound like this, when you release the clutch, what it's going to try and do is it's going to try and turn this gear. And then if you just go nice and easy, it will fall right in and you won't have this damage. So as you can see here, there's a lot of damage on the edge of this dog ring. This is what it should look like. So this is reverse, lots of damage. This is first. There's a little bit of damage in first, but not nearly as much as reverse. The other thing you have to realize is reverse, when you go to reverse, you're trying to turn the transmission backwards. So it makes it even trickier to prevent this. So if we go through our dog rings here, there's second gear which does not look very good. There's third gear, which does not look very good. Fourth gear looks about the same. Fifth gear actually looks pretty good. So it's actually, as you get higher in the, in the gears, the ratios get closer, which means it's a less of an RPM drop when you shift. So um, it's actually easier to not damage fifth gear. Uh, but when you have your transmission apart like this, you might as well just replace all the dog rings. So the other thing that we'll look at is to make sure that our gears are all in good shape. Now what IMCO's done a really good job of is making sure that the gear is harder than the dog ring. This dog ring is far cheaper than this gear. So the dog ring wears, we can replace it. There's virtually no wear or damage on these gears. They all look really, really good. This is a simple case of um, cleaning everything up and we will get some new dog rings coming and reassemble. So be sure to uh, stay tuned for that in our next video and as always like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.